Today in its 2014 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van, we're going to install part number 90885 from Takansha. To help us to install our brake controller, we're also going to use part number ETBC7. We're going to need another part, which is a bracket for it to install our 7-pole connector bracket. That's going to be part number 18136. Let's do the manual override. And you can see how it scrolls through the numbers. So that works. We'll go ahead and push the brake pedal down. And you can see that our brake pedal is sending signal out as well. All right, let's go ahead and put our bracket into place. I think we'll go ahead and install it from the bottom like this. We'll take a clamp, run it around through the hole of the bracket and back over around the hitch, and then through the attachment point on the other side. Okay, as we thread it through, we'll go ahead and snap the bolt back into place. We'll go ahead and tighten it up. Let's go ahead and take our bracket for a 7-pole connector that comes with the ETBC 7 kit and attach it to our bracket. Like that. We'll use the hardware that comes with this bracket to attach it. Okay, we'll go ahead and tighten down that hardware. Now let's go ahead and take our 7-pole connector that comes with the ETBC 7 kit and attach it to our bracket. We'll install it just like that. Okay, this hardware comes with the kit, so we'll go ahead and put that together. All right, now at this point, we can go ahead and start hooking up wires. We'll start with our four pole connector that comes off the seven pole connector. This will go into our previously installed four pole connector right here. So I'm gonna move these wires out of the way for now and we'll just deal with this. So I'll go ahead and four pole down and we'll put these together. We'll also use some dielectric grease to help protect the connections because this will be a semi-permanent connection when we're done. Now this is the dielectric grease we're using, part number 11755. Okay, we'll go ahead and push these two together. Then we'll go ahead and put some tape around it to help protect our connection. All right, we'll go ahead and leave that alone for now. Let's tuck that up out of the way. Now we'll go ahead and work with our white and purple wires. Okay, now a purple wire is an auxiliary circuit typically used for a reverse light circuit. In this case, it's not being hooked up because we don't have a provision for it. So this is just going to be tied up and stored out of the way for a future upgrade if needed. You could also use this for a different type of circuit if you wanted to. All right, and now the white wire with the ring terminal will be your ground. So we'll go ahead and run that up and attach it to the frame of the vehicle. And we'll just go ahead and just run these two together to just keep things easy. We'll go ahead and bundle this guy up for access later on, if needed. We'll go ahead and route this up and follow some pre-existing wiring up towards the frame. Now we're using number 14 size screw that actually comes with a kit for our ground. We'll go ahead and work for our last two wires now, our blue and our black. Our black wire is typically used for a 12 volt power supply and our blue wire will be our output from our brake controller. So we'll hook up our gray cable that comes with the ETBC7 kit to these two wires. All right, we'll go ahead and get our cable ready. We'll go ahead and remove the gray sheath. Then we'll strip the wire back. These are pre-installed block connectors we'll use. Black to black and white to blue.
We'll go ahead and add some electric tape to help protect our connections. We'll go ahead and take our cable and go ahead and run it towards the front just enough to help hold it up and out of the way. Let's go ahead and get our wires together and we'll go ahead and bundle them up as best we can. We'll use some electric tape to help put it together. We'll use a small chunk of aluminum material that comes with the kit. And we'll go ahead and hide our wires behind our loom here. Now we're gonna use some extra long zip ties that didn't come with the kit to help hold everything to the hitch. At this point, we got our wires bundled up underneath the vehicle by the bumper. We'll go ahead and cut off our tails from the zip ties. Now we're just going to continue on running our gray cable up towards the front. Stay away from anything moving like suspension components or anything hot like the exhaust. And then we'll run this up all the way up to our battery box underneath the front seat of the van. Now in this case we have some pre-existing wiring that we can go ahead and attach to and just follow it up to it. With our gray cable ran the way we want it, we'll go ahead and secure it with some zip ties. And by this time, we're pretty short on zip ties. It's always a good idea to get extra zip ties anytime you're doing stuff like this. Okay, this is our battery box right here. And again, we'll go ahead and follow our wiring. And we're gonna make another hole into the side of our box right here to run our wires through. Now, one thing to know about our install is that we're gonna need access to the battery. We're gonna be in the cab of the van, so we'll go ahead and remove this panel right here. And the Torx bit we used was a T25. Put a panel to the side in a safe spot. Okay, now we go ahead and take the floor mat out of the way. All right, we're gonna get access to a battery by loosening up these four screws. We'll slide our panel back and go ahead and remove it. And put that in a safe spot. Now we got access to our battery. Let's go ahead and make us some room. We'll go ahead and move our cable out of the way. And we'll go ahead and drill a hole pretty close to some pre-existing wiring already. Let's go ahead and I think push it down out of the way will work. We'll go ahead and drill out a hole using a half inch drill bit. We'll go ahead and take a gray cable and run through that hole from underneath. We got a cable ran through, we'll go ahead and cut to the length we need. In this case, we'll just run it maybe a few foot and that's it. And we'll go ahead and just cut off our excess. All right, let's go ahead and cut off some of our excess wire. Chances are we'll probably even shorten this down from here. But first we need to go ahead and split these two wires. Our white wire is going to go to our output of our brake controller. So we'll just go ahead and put that to the side and out of the way for now. Okay, now our black wire is a 12 volt power supply. This will eventually go back to our positive post on our battery. Let's go ahead and take the cover off and put it out of the way for now. So it'll eventually go right here. But we need to run this wire through a 40 amp circuit breaker. So we'll go ahead and attach the circuit breaker to the inside edge of the battery box. And now our brake controller, we need a circuit breaker too. We'll go ahead and add both circuit breakers at the same time. Let's go ahead and add our circuit breakers. Now the ETBC7 kit comes with three different uh, breakers. 40 amp for our 12 volt power supply for a connector, either a 20 amp or a 30 amp circuit breaker, depending on the brake controller and load that you're pulling. 
this case we'll be working with the 20 amp circuit breaker. Go ahead and overlap our two circuit breakers. And these are screws that come with the kit. Probably don't want to use anything longer because there's some lines that run up right behind our box here. All right, we'll go ahead and run our wire through our 40 amp circuit breaker. We'll go ahead and cut the wire in half and use a small ring terminal and attach to both sides. Now we'll go ahead and hook up to our circuit breaker. Now our output to our seven pole connector will go to the silver post and our copper post always goes towards the battery. Okay, now our other, the rest of our wire here will shorten up and run to our positive side of our battery. We'll go ahead and add a large ring terminal to it. Now we'll actually leave our actual connection to the positive post as one of the last things we do. So we don't need any power running through the wires until we actually need it. So we'll just leave that disconnected and out of the way. All right, now let's go ahead and work on running cable for our brake controller. This will be our cable for our positive and ground wires for our brake controller. And we'll use the leftover cable we have to do that. So we'll go ahead and measure out what we need. We're gonna need maybe a few foot at the most. We'll cut it off to length. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and split some of our wire back. Let's go ahead and add our black wire to our circuit breaker. So once again, we'll go ahead and add two small ring terminals. and our lead going to our positive side of the battery, we'll get another large ring terminal. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and add our wires to our circuit breaker. Okay, once again, going to our battery, we'll go ahead and route that wire to our copper post. All right, at this point, we'll go ahead and tighten down all the, the nuts for our circuit breakers. Let's not forget about our ground wire for our brake controller. We'll go ahead and put a large ring terminal on this wire as well. And just like our other two power wires, we'll go ahead and leave this one disconnected for now. All right, now at this point, we should have three wires left over. Our single white wire for our output for our brake controller, and then our white and our black wire for our ground and power for our brake controller. Okay, we'll go ahead and shorten them up as needed. At this point, we can go ahead and start working with our brake controller. Now, we'll get a wire harness from our brake control right here. We're gonna deal with three wires. We'll go ahead and remove our red one for now. We'll just get that out of the way. And then we'll go ahead and connect up our wires. First, we'll go ahead and work with our blue wire and connect it up to our white wire. We'll be using the buck connectors that come with the brake controller.
Back to our cable here. And we'll just go ahead and match these up color for color. Okay, white to white, and black to black. We use another buck connector from our ETBC7 kit. Use that guy here. Let's go ahead and use some electric tape and just loosely wrap it to keep our wire bundled together. Okay, we'll go ahead and use the rest of our loom material. And we'll use that to cover up our wires for our brake controller. Okay, what's gonna happen next is we're gonna take a wire harness and we're gonna hide it. We're gonna actually hide it behind our plastic here. And then come out in the opening right here. So we'll go ahead and loosen up our, our panel with these two screws right here. We'll go ahead and remove those and then just hide it up behind it. That should be enough. All right, now, we got one wire left, a little red wire. We'll go ahead and pull that out. And we're gonna take this wire, and we're going to install that onto the cold side of our brake switch. In other words, wire, we need to connect this to a wire that only gets hot when we press the brake pedal. Our circuit that we need here is gonna be pink with a green wire. Now one thing to know when looking for a circuit is that when you try a regular incandescent uh, light tester, there's not enough power going through it. It's only good enough to power up an LED tester. And this is our, our pink wire with a green stripe. We'll go ahead and use a quick splice connector that comes with a kit and put a red wire to it. Okay, all right, let's go ahead and mount our brake controller. We'll go ahead and mount it to the bottom edge of a dash right here. We'll go ahead and use the sheet metal screws to attach it. Now you're gonna make sure the pocket is in a straight line with the vehicle so the brake controller will be. Once we have it set, we'll go ahead and install the other screw. Okay, let's go ahead and take a wire harness, run through the pocket, and push into our brake controller. Then we'll go ahead and put our brake controller back into our pocket. Okay, let's go ahead and make our final connections to our battery. We'll go ahead and connect our two power cables to the positive post. And we'll go ahead and connect up our ground wire to ground post right here. Okay, now the post on here has a stop to keep the nut from coming all the way off. So all we'll do is just put a cut in our ring terminal and slide it into place. Okay, all our connections are made. Okay, looks like we got power to our brake controller because we have two dots. One shows that power is going to the brake controller and the other one shows the boost setting that's already started. Now we'll go ahead and move our manual override and you can see it shows an NC, that means no connection. Now we'll go ahead and hook up a trailer to it and make sure it sees the trailer. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our interior components back together and we're almost done.
Or if you have anything back together, that'll finish it for our install, part number 90885 from Takancha, the Project P2 brake controller on our 2014 Mercedes-Benz Sprinter van.